the Ethereum merge is one of the biggest events in all of crypto's history. When the world's leading smart contract platform switched from proof of work to proof of stake, this was a massive technical feat for the Ethereum blockchain that was a huge success. And now that all the anticipation and the hype around the merge has faded, lots of people are wondering like, hey, what's next for the Ethereum roadmap? Well, in this video, I'm gonna talk about the next big Ethereum upgrade that's going to happen and why it's such a big deal because it can bring up to 100x scalability to the network. I'm gonna break this down in simple terms so that you can understand it and why it's important. I'm gonna talk about all this as a blockchain developer myself who works the Ethereum protocol on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to become a blockchain master, step-by-step, start to finish, land your first blockchain job, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about this next big Ethereum upgrade that's coming down the pike. So again, we just had the merge where Ethereum switched from proof of work to proof of stake. This is a massive technical feat that's really a part of a bigger plan for Ethereum because this blockchain was originally created, you know, as Ethereum 1.0 to get it out there to get users really as a prototype, but to change and upgrade the blockchain over time to become much more scalable, much more faster and cheaper to use so that it can rival, you know, transaction speeds of like Visa and cost, for example. And so this formerly was known as Ethereum 2.0, but that's really since been rebranded to really just be Ethereum that's going to change and upgrade over time. And so we're in the middle of this multi-phase transition where we're making incremental upgrades to the blockchain. So we just made the upgrade for the merge and so what's next? One of the biggest disappointments with the merge was that it didn't make Ethereum faster and it didn't make it any cheaper because that's one of the biggest complaints that people have with the Ethereum network is it's too slow and it's too expensive. And they think that the technology can never really truly reach mass adoption with this bottleneck. But the next major upgrades on the roadmap aim to fix that problem. So let's see what they are and how those work. So the next major change to the Ethereum blockchain is implementing something called sharding. Okay, so this is really where you're breaking the blockchain up into smaller groups so that not everybody's responsible for every single thing in the network. And this is how we get that scalability benefit that I'm talking about. So let me break it down in simple terms so that you can understand it. And we'll talk about the exact you know, changes when they're going to happen, all that type of stuff. So what even is scalability in the first place and how do you improve it from a theoretical level? So basically, let's talk about transactions per second. Right now, you know, Ethereum's slow, but what if we want to make it, you know, 100,000 transactions plus? Well, what is a transaction? So let's say that I'm just sending cryptocurrency from my account to yours. That's a transaction. Let's say that I am, you know, uh, going to trade a token on a DEX like Uniswap and just swap so that's that's a transaction. So all those things are you know sent to the blockchain and all those transactions are bundled into groups of records called blocks, which are chained together to make up the blockchain. OK, and we can only do so many transactions per second. So scalability in terms of throughput basically says, how can we add more transactions to these blocks in a smaller window of time to make it faster? OK, so, you know, you can see the scalability trilemma here. This is one of the big problems with blockchain scaling in the first place. You can do things to make your blockchain more scalable, but what you really want to do is preserve decentralization and security. So some blockchains will do things like say, hey, we'll just, you know, let people do more transactions, we'll increase the block space. But the problem with that is it makes the blockchain too big and unwieldy over time, and it increases centralization or decreases decentralization because it, it may, means only, you know, a small number of computers actually are going to participate in that because it becomes too hard for other people. So how do you get the scalability benefit with also, you know, preserving decentralization and security? Well, that's exactly where sharding comes into place. So one of the reasons that Ethereum is slow right now is because all those transactions, like I was talking about, every time a token is sent, every time, you know, a token is traded, that those all really have to go through pretty much every computer in the network uh, in order to, you know, get validated and included into the blockchain itself. But what sharding does is it breaks that responsibility into smaller groups in the network. So if you're a software developer already, you may have heard of the concept of sharding, like when you're talking about scaling databases, if you have a lot of data, then maybe you break that data up into smaller shards and then you have this master process that kind of orchestrates all of those shards to work together, okay? And really, you can think about the blockchain as a database in and of itself. It really is. And so that's a similar concept here. So essentially, you know, anytime a transaction goes through, instead of having every single validator or every single node in the entire network be responsible for including that transaction into the blockchain, you can break it up into smaller chunks to where a smaller group is responsible for that. And then the rest of the network verifies that that took place and then includes that into the chain. And you can do this by basically taking all the validators that exist in the network and breaking them up into smaller groups where you do random sampling, where you basically randomly assign a certain group 
to take care of that. And then each of those sets or committees are grouped together to help push that block back onto the blockchain. Now, like the entire Ethereum roadmap, sharding itself is a bigger concept that's going to be broken up into multiple different efforts, okay? So you might have heard some of these terms floating around like dank sharding or proto dank sharding. So the the sharding upgrade essentially is going to be uh, shipped incrementally, okay? And so the first major change is what's going to be called proto dank sharding, which is going to be EIP 4844. So if you've ever seen EIP, that terminology floating around, this just stands for Ethereum Improvement Proposal. This is basically the the process for which Ethereum receives upgrades. They basically put together a proposal. Those go through development and, you know, get accepted and updated into the client software to actually implement the change. So EIP 4844 is the next big thing to hit the roadmap. And so what this does is it increases the scalability specifically with rollups. OK, so again, you know, a lot of people just losing with the merge because it didn't make Ethereum faster, didn't make it cheaper to use. Well, that's essentially where rollups come into play or layer two scaling solutions. OK, so we have different. This is basically where you have a separate environment where you do transactions. And then you roll those up and you settle those on top of the Ethereum chain itself. You've seen things like Optimism and Arbitrum, uh, other players like ZK Sync, there's different types of rollups. But what this next major upgrade does is it makes the scalability for those rollups much better, notably cheaper to use. So basically what this upgrade does is it introduces a new type of transaction that can get included on the network. So Remember what I was talking about, the big bottleneck for scalability is how many transactions that you can include in order to make that faster. If you can include more transactions, you, you make it uh, faster or I said a different way, more data. OK, so again, rollups essentially take a bunch of transactions and bundle them up into a smaller uh, you know, piece of data that gets posted back on the Ethereum chain. And what you know, sh this next upgrade EIP 4844 does is it increases the amount of data that can be stored by a rollup on chain and hence improve the scalability. So you can see here, I'll post a link to this article down in the description below for full credit, but it says the most important feature of EIP 4844 is the blob, which is a new type of transaction. It's similar to regular transaction, but only carries an extra piece of call data called the blob. These are large packages around 125 KB, and this transaction would be much cheaper to execute than call data with the same data. And if you actually want to quantify what the benefit here would be for Ethereum, you can look at this tape from Optimism, which is one of the leaders in the Ethereum scaling space. So they are an optimistic roll-up technology built on top of Ethereum. It's basically saying this means that Ethereum can process much more roll-up data without sacrificing decentralization. Again, that scalability trilemma that I was talking about. And the result would be that roll-ups can get up to 100x cheaper fees without having to wait for the full version of dank sharding. Again, I was talking about sharding being broken up into multiple efforts. This initial thing would reduce the cost by up to 100 times without having to wait for the full sharding implementation to take place. Even better, it's designed to be forward compatible with dank sharding, you know, the final version here, meaning the advantage is compound. So with data availability sampling, nodes will be able to determine the availability of these blobs without downloading it all themselves. And this would get us yet another 10x, all without further changes to the execution layer. So that would be a massive increase in the performance of Ethereum scaling. You know, people, again, talk about how it's too slow, it's too expensive to use. Well, you can get a lot of the speed and cost scalability now with layer twos, when sharding comes into play, expect the cost to plummet dramatically. All right, now comes the really important question of when is this going to happen? So the latest word on the street is that the EIP 4844 upgrade is expected sometime in 2023. So I know that's a pretty big range of time. But one good thing about this is that, you know, we saw a lot of doubt around the Ethereum merge on what it actually ship when people expected it or when the developers actually said that it would go live on the chain. And the fact that we actually made those deadlines, you know, in public with everyone watching and waiting, it was a pretty good boost of confidence that Ethereum can actually execute its roadmap. And whenever they propose these timelines, that they're, you know, pretty accurate. And another thing to consider is that, you know, all the resources that were just dedicated to making the merge successful for Ethereum, now that the merge has happened, all those resources are freed up to work on these next efforts, which can really accelerate those timelines and make sure that they actually, you know, deliver when people you know, expect. And another thing to understand is that, you know, the Ethereum roadmap has several things coming down the pike, but it's not like they're all just being developed sequentially. They're going to be shipped sequentially. It's not like you're just going to deliver a bunch of updates all at once. But we have multiple things being developed in parallel, which means we have some of the smartest minds in the entire blockchain space and arguably the entire world 
working on this next wave of technology so that it comes in a timely fashion. All right, so the last thing I want to include in this video is actually a homework assignment. If you want to actually get your hands dirty and learn more about sharding and how it works from a really deep technical level, I've tried to present a very you know simple high level overview of what it is and what the benefits are in the timeline in this video. But for additional reading, definitely go check out this article on Vitalik's website. Okay, so Vitalik Buterin, you're the mastermind behind Ethereum, okay, and the leader in a lot of the development for this stuff. So talking about why sharding is great, so demystifying the technical properties, he actually breaks down exactly how sharding and work, how you basically break the blockchain up into smaller blockchains. He talks about the scalability trilemma in depth, which I talked about in this video. And then also, you know, how you could shard through random sampling and some of the other techniques they're looking at to actually implementing sharding on the Ethereum network. So if you want to, uh, you know, go deeper down this rabbit hole, grab a cup of coffee and, uh, you know, kind of stretch your brain a little bit, then definitely go check this out. All right, so that's an overview of the next major update that's coming down the pike for Ethereum and why this is such a big deal and what you need to understand. So if you like this video, as always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? When you go to my YouTube homepage, you can find those free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you went to the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you how to master blockchain step by step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You do have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.